The one guy who kind of went through that was Martin Nonu, right? He made the All Blacks 2003 and then suddenly he was off the radar for a while and then he came back to become, you know, arguably our best second five ever. Um, he's still playing at 37 years of age um, and he's learned a lot. I mean, he looks after his body. He obviously is a fantastic player. He's not got a contract to go back to France and play again. Can you believe that? I can because it was only a year ago he was playing for us and carving really and yeah, didn't miss a training session. You know, like his, his body's in great nick, but I think the biggest shift these days is exactly that. Like athletes know how to look after their body. Mm. They know what they need to prepare. And I think coaches and clubs are better at managing older athletes and understanding that they're not always going to be on the grass. You know, yep. but when it comes to getting on the field and delivering, they will. Um, so I think there's been growth in all areas of the business to allow guys to uh, play on a little bit longer. You know, we had DC in our environment this year and you know, he's, he's still carving. Like, although he didn't play, but at training, you know, you know he's still got it. He's still got the finesse and the timing. So I think a lot of it's to do around the professionals they are and the way they look after their body, but also the clubs they go to, um, you know, and the way they look after him, you know, you speak to Jerome um, and the way he is at Toulouse, like he's still carving and absolutely smashing and belting blokes. Um, but, you know, he just loves it there. He loves the environment. He loves the way the club looks after him and his family. And that's all part of it, you know. And then age is really, literally, I know it's stupid, but age is really just a number if you're happy and you're still playing well. Mm. Yep. Um, says, so just... says the 33 year <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. It feels like twenty-five years into professional rugby, maybe there's a maturation that's going on. Um, teams and systems and countries are starting to figure out how to keep going and and what it means to keep an athlete in the top of his career for a long time. Because you look at the NBA, and you know, like Vince Carter only just retired. Mm. You know, and yeah. these guys can keep on giving. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah, it's down to your own motivation, isn't it? If, if it's down to the individual. But the, the one thing that, you know, wears you out the most probably is just the men mental prep and, and things yeah. like that. You know, physically, it's not so much, um, I don't believe, an issue, like as long as you're, you're healthy physically. It's just, you know, keeping that motivation um, to want to keep performing and loving your job. And I think the guys that we've mentioned, uh, you know, just love footy and they love... Mm. Uh, playing but also they love helping out like Ma was exceptional and you know our group Dan was the same like DC was just amazing in the way he was helping others and you know there would be days I'd see him just training um, you know, him training but then Jack Hyten training alongside of him you know chatting and, and talking mm -hmm. and you know, there's a young Harvard 10 12 um, to have the experience in and around a squad and and that almost like a coach they're playing still but they also got the ability to coach yep. which I think it's another growth Mate, in, in yep. the businesses. These senior players are now being seen valuable in the sense that, yeah, they can play, say, 50%, 60% of the games, but they can also you know, yep. be on the grass helping coach. I had, Mate, that's 100% hundred percent agree with that. I think of an example of that for us, like a guy like Tim Bateman, who didn't play didn't play a lot of footy for us in his, in his three years that he's with us, but we seriously don't want a title with, without Tim Bateman. And it's just, you know, it's the unsung heroes that goes behind the scenes around, you know, not many people in the public would understand how much of an influence a guy like that had on our group. And it's, it's a selfless, it's a selfless job as well. I think I look back at Tim, he could have played anywhere in the country at that time, you know, the last three years and, you know, probably be starting or playing every single week. But whoa, 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 whoa. I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> mate, oh, <laughs> mate, oh, 100%, oh, mate, oh, seriously, oh, the way that his... What's wrong with our midfield, mate? Oh, mate. Hey, what's wrong with that? Oh, Where is he slipping in on our midfield, mate? I'm pretty sure Ringy might have been in his ear, mate. That's for sure. I'm pretty sure he might have been mate, in his ear. He wasn't coming to wear 12 or 13, I can assure you. <laughs> he would have been very similar to... Um, um, DJ and Reeks have got it on lock, mate. Oh, yeah, this year. Absolutely. 100%, mate. You guys were, they were on fire. Because because Sonny uh, Bill and Ma weren't that bad last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, mate. Oh, mate. <laughs> he's just said he could have gone and started anywhere else in the comp, mate. We, we know you're you know, good. Mate. We know you're good, but you're not that good. Oh, mate. Oh, I, I question that. Red mate. and black brainwashing that's going on. Oh, mate, oh, what's mate, happening mate. down there? I'm a, I'm a cancer, I just mate. couldn't let I'm it go. I'm a cancer, mate. I would have been, I would have been, you know, 
killed if I'd let that go. <laughs> um, <laughs> Some of the best midfielders come through our team for years. <laughs> oh, um, but uh, yeah, but coming back to that point around those guys kind of experience like, mate, I know Jack Hyden talking around DC and the amount of learnings that he got, you know, an idol of his, but that game management stuff that we've talked about a lot on the show, especially with those kind of positions, um, it can only be beneficial when, uh, I know for us personally, having a guy like that, um, he was massive for us and was definitely an unsung hero for us. Mm. We'll start was... anywhere in the country. Yeah, I'm only joking to you. <laughs> you can come join us. Yeah, like nice, you're, you're a great coach. Very yeah, nice. <laughs> Uh, is it also the fact that they can go overseas, experience a different culture, experience a couple of different cultures, and then come home? And there's a certain freshness that comes to you that allows your career, grow, career to go on that you wouldn't get if you just tried to do it at home and it turned into more of a grind and a repetitive sameness? Oh, there's two ways of looking at it because I've heard it's, you know, there's a lot of games overseas, maybe not Japan. You know, there's not as many, but they train pretty long hours. So, um, can't speak from experience, obviously, but it's still, you know, there's still an expectation. Like when they go overseas, they're paid, you know, they're normally the highest paid players. So you've got to perform and deliver. And we've seen, you know, the pressures of that can be the other way and, and sap you mentally. So it's not, it's not all, you know, roses anywhere, really. It's, it's I, I think, no, I just think it's maturing. You know, growing up, I don't think it's about going overseas and freshening up. I, I just think uh, people mature. Um, you know, Bryn and myself, we can say honestly, we're not, we were never like we are now back when we started, you know, and, and, and our willingness to probably help out teammates and stuff isn't the same when you're young and you're just wanting to crack. And, you know, I don't think it's about going overseas and freshening up. I think it's just about that maturity and, and I suppose the thrill of seeing what you once were in, in someone else and achieving that. And, and, the, and you know, almost if you can help someone along the way and, and then they go on and achieve their goals, you know, that's, that's a pretty cool thing. I suppose that's what coaches feel every day. Yeah. yeah you've become a bit of a father figure in the team, mate. No, nah, no, nah, not me, hey? man. I just, I just sit in the corner, kick start. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, now because the big fella's left. He was the oldest in the group, so right here. <laughs> yeah. No, but you, you, like the guys we've talked about, yeah. I don't think they would have been the way they were, you know, but it's, they're not that way because of their experience overseas. They're that way just because of the, their maturity. Is, I think it's because of their maturity of pe as people, not where they've been.